of uh, Israel, which we know, Eliyahu, from the north, uh, Eliyahu Hatishbi, and Yochanan the Beloved from Jewish Israel, by virtue of his Levite blood that later merged with the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Not only that, Eliyahu and, and Yochanan are the only two witnesses who never died who are true olive branches. Even if Enoch never died, doesn't matter. He's not a true olive branch. Hello? He's not a true olive branch. He, even if he is uh, uh, one of the one of the even even if he if he um, oh, I'm gonna get my thoughts here. He is not a, a Yehudite and he is not an Ephraimite, period, even if he never died. That's what I meant to say. Even if he never died, it is irrelevant. He died, he didn't die, he could have died, he should have died, he would have died, he was transported, he was deported, doesn't matter. Turn to your neighbor and say, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, in retrospect, Moses, Moshe, could be classified as being Jewish from Ben Yehuda, Levi, he was a Levite, which later joined with Jewish Israel. Could Moshe be one of the two witnesses as a Jewish witness? Yes, he could. But there's a problem. According to, Mo to the word of Yahweh, what happened to Moshe? He died. he died. We've got to find an Ephraimite that never died, and we've got to find a Yehudite who never died. Moshe cannot be one of the two witnesses because he died, and if he was killed in Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 11, if he'll be killed again, that means he had to die twice. And we know the two witnesses must be a, someone who never died before. B, one from Yehuda, one from Ephraim, one of the olive branches of Israel. Does any of this make sense? Amen, yes. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So Moshe cannot be one of the two witnesses, even though Moshe technically is Jewish. Turn your neighbor and say technically. <laughs> Speaking technically, Yahweh solved our problem, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Technically, Moshe is one of the two, cannot be one of the two witnesses. Why? He died. And if he dies again, he would break the rule, the spiritual rule of Ephraim 9 and 27. It is appointed unto men once to die, then the judgment. Oh, man. So that kind of narrows down the field, doesn't it? Doesn't that kind of narrow down the field? You need one from Ephraim, one from Judah, one from each of the two collective olive tree houses who never experienced death. Doesn't that narrow the field down somewhat? Yeah. This is so easy. It's going to be so easy that those of you who are bored and looking at your watch, you'll throw your watch out by the time I'm finished. <laughs> with you. Hallelujah. Even you Spanish folks who read backwards. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> now we lose all the Spanish folks. But it doesn't matter. When I conclude, don't, don't translate that, don't try me. When I conclude that, this message, you're going to get it from the master's lips, not Rabbi Moshe's lips. You're going to get it directly through the master's lips. And it's going to be so simple that whether you read backwards, forwards, or upside down, you'll see it is there all along. But I'm working my way there. I'm working my way back to you. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay? Can you dig it? Enoch wasn't an olive branch. Enoch wasn't a Hebrew. What makes you and your theology think that Yahweh is going to uh, take a man who, had, who is not a Yisraelite or a Hebrew prophet and prophesy to the Hebrew people when he existed before there was a Hebrew people? That can't be the Bible. It may be some version of, or per version of the Bible, but not our Bible. Enoch is disqualified on many grounds. Just hang with me now. <laughs> if we don't hang together, we're all going to hang separate. Anyway, so he's disqualified on many grounds. Let's continue. Number, number three, Yahweh has chosen, as we mentioned, one witness from each house. It also stands to reason, listen, that one witness must represent the first covenant and one witness must represent the renewed covenant. I'll say that again. It stands to reason that one witness must represent the Tanakh and one represent, must represent the Brit Chadashah or the renewed covenant. How do I know? Like any good lawyer will tell you. Precedent. <laughs> Pre 
Christ for them. In heaven, broken on in Gideon chapter 4, gets a picture of the 26.34 elders. How many elders are before the throne? 24. Why 24? Why not 23? Why not Pete Ghost? Why not 19 and a half? Why not Pi? Three point, what is that? One four? Right! 12, 12, 12 Nevi'im representing the Tanakh, and 12 Shlichim representing the Brit Chalashah. Yahweh's elders that are the, in the inner circle of worship in heaven represent 12 tribes, listen, from first covenant Israel and 12 tribes from renewed covenant Israel, if the biblical pattern can, is not to be broken, that would disqualify Enoch as one of the two witnesses because, listen, if Enoch and Elijah were the two witnesses as they would have you believe, or even Enoch and Moses, listen, or even Elijah and Moses, listen, then all of a sudden Yahweh breaks the pattern of 24 elders, 12 representing the first covenant, 12 representing the renewed covenant. Yahweh breaks the pattern, has two witnesses from the first covenant and none from the renewed covenant. Now, if you believe that, I have a uh, fish market to sell you in New York. It's called the defunct Fulton Fish Market. Yahweh will never have two witnesses from Tanakh and zero representing the mission of his son Yeshua HaMashiach. Can I get a witness? Can I get two witnesses? Can I, can, 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 can I get two end time witnesses? Baruch Hashem now. Can I get any witnesses that are comfortable on the pews? Baruch Hashem now. So Yahweh doesn't break the pattern. Yahweh cannot break his pattern. If he's going to have two witnesses, there must be both be two branches of Israel, two olive trees, and one witness representing the 12 tribes of the first covenant, and the other witness representing the 12 tribes of the renewed covenant. Who do you think would fit? Who would be apropos? Who do you think would be a perfect fit to represent the 12 tribes of redeemed Israel and the renewed covenant? Yochanan, because he was one of the 12. He was Jewish, unlike Enoch. And unlike Moses, John, Yochanan never died. Because Yeshua said, well, it is not your business if he remains alive until I come. For there are some, Matthew 17, 5, 1 through 5, standing here who will not die till I come. And mind your own business. What is that to you? And so the false rumor went out among the Talmudim that this Talmud wouldn't die. Yochanan says, I bear witness. I know what was said. I was there. Yeshua didn't say the Talmud, Yochanan, the beloved, the author of John, would not die. He said, he will not die till I come. What is it your business if he remain alive till I come? That's what the master said. The master never said Yochanan wouldn't die. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Get the tape, Daryl. Don't have time to backtrack. Just get the tape. So Yahweh wouldn't leave himself with two witnesses from Tanah and none from the Bissorah brought by his son. No, one from the Bissorah era and one from the time of the Tanakh. Not dispensations, but both representing both the first covenant as well as the renewed covenant. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay, now, and finally, this is going to be a short message, but short is sweet. Finally, listen, because we have to go to Rosh Kodesh. Finally, let's, 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 let's make believe everything over the past two teachings didn't click. Okay, let's, let's, let's make believe. Okay, now we go to the words of Yeshua. Why did I read you that whole thing from the book of Hanukkah? Because it was interesting. I mean, isn't it interesting that Enoch buried Adam? Yes. How else would you know, unless you were in the hallway? <laughs> How else would you know 
that Enoch buried Adam. 